Hiya, and welcome back to Distant Travels. The game that teaches us if you freak out because something's going... I don't know where I'm going with that. I have no clue where I'm going with that. Um, so, let's just hop right in. Bring the window up and move it. If you're wondering what this list is right here, uh, we're keeping count of all the references that Max makes because he makes a lot of references. So let's just jump right in. It's hard for you to hide your reaction as you enter the room. This is more than a couple of servers. Too much equipment. Not really too much to manage, just not what I expected. I think John might have overshot the purchases a bit. It's probably preferable to undershooting, since we're going so far from er so far away from Earth. Depends on what they uh, need it all to do exactly. I think John will walk you through it. From what I understand, it's relatively simple compared to what you usually do. You take a minute to look through everything. It all seems to be stuff you're used to working with. And all the very high end, and all very high end, barely looked up, barely hooked up. There's also a lot of extra equipment and cables. All in all, it seems like there's enough stuff here for me to do pretty much anything they'll need, if I understood the description correctly way back then. It hasn't been that long, even if it feels like it. Space does that. It messes with your mind a bit. Rex clears his throat. I'm sorry for before. What do you mean? I got too intense. I shouldn't project my worries and fears onto you. He lets out a deep sigh. I have a few things from my past that I'm still struggling with. I'll try not to be as intense going forward. It was very rude of me. Don't be sorry. I found it interesting. This is all new to me, and you have a bit of a different perspective from most people I've talked to. Thanks, Alex. You finish up going through the equipment, and Rex heads off to continue his work. With a couple hours left, with a couple of hours left of the day, you decide to go see Mike for a bit. You haven't really talked since you go to the Firefly. It's been quite intense. You check your communication band to see if you can call or send Mike a message. It takes you a minute, but eventually you figure out how to call someone. It's a sequence of holding down one of the buttons and saying their name. Evening, Alex. Steel with Bruce. Actually, I just finished eating dinner, and, uh... Why does it suddenly feel awkward to have called him? Well, no going back now. I was wondering if it's alright if I come by for a bit, if you're not too busy. I'm just taking a break. How about you come by the observation deck? You can always come by, by the way. Your soft sigh through the call, a kind of content one, but still one easing some pressure. What you doing, bubs? <laughs> that was my dog being weird. I don't think I've said it properly. I like you, Alex, so don't be afraid to reach out. That's unexpected. How do I respond to that? I like him too, but does he mean it like that? Fuck it. Time to stop overthinking everything. I'll remember that. Thanks, Mike. I'll be waiting for you. See you in a bit. See you in a bit. You make your way to the closest elevator, and after less than a minute, you arrive at the observation deck. As you arrive, you spot Mike across the room, sitting on a bench and looking out towards some stars. You make your way to the bench and sit down next to him. Oh! This is a demo, Daddy. This is a demo, Daddy. <laughs> God. Fucking horrible. He 
you make your way to the bench and sit down next to him. This is my favorite place of reflection. I come here to sort through my thoughts and remember long gone times. Fascinating, isn't it? We're far above our respective worlds, and still, it doesn't feel that far. Before my first flight, I imagined it so distant and unreal, but here we are. It's still incredible to me. He turns and looks to you. It's a matter of perspective, then. That's one of the things I like about you, your outlook. He did mean that he likes me. From what I heard from Julia, you've been through your fair share of troubles. Still, here you are, looking at the future. It's inspiring. Perhaps that's why we're all so fascinated with you. You all? It's why you've been swarmed with people wanting to talk to you and spend time with you since the moment you stepped foot on the Firefly. That's a good point. There's been a few intense conversations already. I've barely had time to rest mentally. Want me to tell them to stop? No, it's fine. Honestly, I'm enjoying it a bit. It's a contrast to what I'm used to. Did Bruce and everyone treat you alright? I enjoyed spending time with Bruce. He taught me a lot about the Firefly and dragons. Everyone's friendly. Gerald's a little... rough. But he seems to care. Honestly, the only thing that's been a little different is Rex. Rex? What happened? Not like that. He just had a lot of questions, but as you said, it's to be expected. What did he ask, if you don't mind me asking? Honestly, just mostly questions about Earth and humans. He got a little intense when he asked me who I thought was the most important person for this mission. Oh, that's an interesting question. I think it's you. He said the same thing. I picked John. He also told me a few things about the Endless White and what it is. I'm sorry, Alex. I'll talk to him. He can get a little intense in his political views. You don't have to. He even apologized afterward. Mike sighs. If you want, I'll give you my opinion or whatever you're or whatever you're curious about. It might even make it a little less stressful if you get another perspective. Then, if it's all right, will you tell me what your opinion on the Spectre is? Rex called it an angel. I've had a few experiences with them, and I wouldn't call them angels. It's an old soldier's tale, stemming from there being visions or sounds from lost loved ones. More often than not, it anchors on to what might be your fe fears or doubts. So when you have lost someone, it's an easy thing for the chemical released in your brain to trigger. Usually I... people... hear or see someone or something touching on their fears and doubts. Their biggest regrets, things that might make them act irrationally, and what he said about them being demons is closer to the truth. Demons? Uh, shit. Demons? It is supposedly a dark omen, but I think that is also just another soldier's tale. As before, it latches onto something you might fear, or wonder about, and if that is a person close to you, it's the same. It's to make you fear that whoever it is may be in danger, and then panic. It's a weapon made to disorder armies. He sighs again. Truly terrifying in my opinion. Should we tell him? Actually, let me Google this real quick.
Well, I can't find anything on it. I'm actually curious what happened, so let's just... What I heard when the specter appeared was something I didn't recognize. Something you didn't recognize? Might be because you're not from Arctos. The weapon wasn't designed with humans in mind. He looks you in the eyes. What did you hear? I heard a voice talking about lost friends trapped in a dark afterlife. It was dark and honestly creepy, but I didn't recognize any of it. The part that made me worry is that it mentioned a commander. Oh? He puts an arm around you. It probably latched onto something you knew about Arctos, and something you would find dark and intimidating. So it picked me, and perhaps something you've read in a book once. It's not real, I promise you that. Thanks. That makes me feel better, somehow. As for Rex, Arctonians can be a romantic bunch. In the worst of ways, we dream of home or of possibilities. It's not that bad, talking about things so openly. Humans are usually more uptight. Being in a place like this is like being drunk in a way. The more relaxed you are, the more it kind of just comes out. But Arctonians can still be a little too intense. This goes twice for the ones that have been away from home for months. So, as for any advice he or I give you, take it for what it is. It's personal and it's advice. It may, it might not relate to you at all. You're one of us now. We're bears, tigers, badgers, dragons, and now humans. So if anyone makes you uncomfortable or acts weird, don't be afraid to tell them off. As I'd put it more casually, call them on their bullshit. I don't think most of us realize it when it happens, but everyone accidentally oversteps or says something that annoys or hurts someone else sometimes. It's fair to call people out on it. I'd prefer it if you call me out when I do it. When I do that, I'll try. There's a pause. You both just sit and contemplate things. Back on Earth, did you ever look into things like star constellations, horoscopes, and the like? Hmm, almost. There's a pause where neither of you say anything. Back on Arctos, we'd have legends behind every constellation and the stars that made them. There are things like horoscopes as well, like being born under a certain star sign or constellation. What fascinated me about the constellations is how we'd make legends on what we thought they were. There's a constellation that is supposed to, de to depict a hydra, for example. As a child, I would hear stories about ancient heroes fighting the beasts. But as an adult, I eventually flew to the other side, and from that side, it almost looked like a heart. I wonder what Arctos will look like to you. I'll let you know when I get the chance. Sorry, I get nostalgic at this view. I am a dreamer. I like that about you. You look surprised and you realize you're blushing. I just admit him, admitted I like him as well, didn't I? Maybe I should just change the subject. I noticed almost every everyone here calls you Mike, not Commander or Sir. On Earth, it'd be considered weird to call your superior in the army by their first name chuckles softly. Probably on Arctos as well. I prefer a more personal connection. Because it's you asking. It has more of a personal connection for me as well. It's a part of my past in a way. The last person I cared for, who called me Sir or Commander, ended up lost in space. He was an old friend, and a good crewmate. An old scar, if you will. I'm sorry. Fuck. Don't be. I never told you. Mike pulls you closer. He is warm, as always, a contrast to the chilly room. He stops after a few seconds and pulls away from you. You get worried for a second that you did something wrong, or that he's having other thoughts than just before. But instead he takes off his jacket and puts it over your shoulders. He puts his arm back around you and you two look at the stars in silence for a while. I can see why you come here to reflect, and to remember. There's always something romantic about the seemingly endless space, isn't there? It's very... solemn. I wonder if that's why it seems hard for him to let go of the layer of sadness he mentioned back on Earth. He looks over towards you. What are you thinking about? I don't know if I should share. It's a bit of a downer thought. Sounds interesting if you share. The view can bring up both good and bad thoughts. As awkward as it is, I might as well share. Even if he does end up thinking I'm weird, it'll be honest. And being somewhat honest about my feelings has been a driving force in my life recently. It was about you and the layer of sadness you mentioned back in Broadtown. I was reflecting on the fact that you seem to, that you seem to easily get nostalgic or lost in thought. So moments like these 
end up being both helpful and harmful in a way, perhaps. Thinking about the layer of sadness all the time. There's a pause. Sorry. Hmm. I don't think you should be. It's a personal thought, but it's a valid one. You're quite reflective yourself, but in a different way. I think you're right, in a way, but I can't let go of that sadness just yet. It's weird to even mention that thought. Sorry, I shouldn't have shared that. I think that life comes and goes in waves. There's sadness, and there's happiness. Even if it's what people strive for, eternal happiness wouldn't benefit anyone. Kind of like the idea that there needs to be evil for there to be good. Or sadness for there to be happiness. Kind of, and I think it comes and goes. Life has its ups and downs, quite literally. Right now, I'm in an up, which is why I can think about sad things without it being as painful. Thinking about the opposite makes it more optimistic. I find myself looking at my past when I'm sad and I'll think about something good. Like remembering my first flight. It's about the balance, then. The two of you continue looking at the stars for a while longer. Eventually, he walks you back to your room and bids you a good night. It doesn't take you long to shower, brush your teeth, and eventually get to bed. It's nice being able to focus on now more than before. Instead of being stuck focusing on myself and my past, I keep thinking about other things. New adventurous things. New worlds! Eventually, you drift off to sleep. A deep sleep. Relaxing. A good ending to a good day. Resting. Pretending to be happy and safe. Satisfied. After a day of being fed lies. Ah, fuck. I cannot bring that up. There we go. You wake up suddenly. It's the voices again. The specter. Trapped in a cage between two worlds. No escape. No safety. You get out of bed and start putting your clothes on. Even if you know what it is, you'd rather not be alone right now. You think them your friends, but they are little else than bloodthirsty beasts, waiting for the chance to strike and devour you. There will be nothing there will be nothing left but bones and lost dreams. You dream of flying in space and explore other and explore another world on wings that are not yours. I will catch you and break those wings. You will never fly. Instead, you will fall. Fall into a pit of despair and darkness. The endless dark, that will be your grave. The endless void of space. With no color and no future. But that does not scare you, does it? You, who had no future to look forward to, to begin with. Become nourishment, become nourishment for the beasts that have led you to destruction. At least then, you will be useful. And in, what, and in that way, at least someone will want you. That's not true. Mike likes me. Do you truly believe that? Right? A man filled with sorrows and loss has nothing to hide other than a dark past. You're nothing but another soul to add to the stream of lost souls he has built his legacy upon. The thing sounds like it's talking right out of a fantasy book. I guess that really is how my brain works. As you exit your room, you spot Rex making his way towards your room through the corridor. Are you alright? <sighs> what should we say? I'm alright. A little shaken, but alright. I'm glad. Will you be alright to stay by yourself for a little bit? I was going to go find someone. Honestly, I'd rather not be alone. Wait here if you can. I'll be back in a little bit. You should stay safe here. This one is different than the ones I've experienced. I'm going to find Mike. Rex. Did it just say your name? You heard the same thing? When you were a boy, you dreamt of the stars. And what do you have now? You were told the sky was the limit, to not reach further. Yet you did. And what did you and the others bring back? Death and destruction. Nothing else. Don't focus on it, Alex. I'll try. You thought yourself an adventurer, charting unknown lands and bringing in the future. In reality, you're nothing more than a virus, spreading your disease across the universe. Rex is visibly shaken. Your world died and the stars you reached for just watched. Did the stars weep for your world as its shine faded? No. Can you feel the grasp of death that you tried to push upon others? 
the tight feeling constricting around your neck, crushing your air pipe as your dreams fizzle out like the last breath of air. This can't happen again. I'll make sure we take you back to Earth. The fool has brought you here for nothing but death, and if we bring you to Arctos, he will be bringing death back to Earth as well. I will fill these corridors with scarlet paintings before I let that happen. Scarlet paintings? Blood? There's a look in Rex's eyes that you don't recognize. It's almost as if he's in a frenzy. I should get away. At least for now. I'll be alright. I should go find Max. He seemed a little shaken last time. I will come find you afterwards. Stay safe. You too, Rex. As Rex makes his way towards the elevator, you move down the corridor. What starts a war? People. Dreams of glory and exploration? No. It is a conquest. You take from others, you do not make it for yourself. And that is your legacy. An atrocity, paid for in the blood of the innocent. Remember, O oh adventurer, it is not the war itself, but rather who is behind it. I should call Mike, and tell him that something's wrong with Rex. Rex might be trying to do something to him. As you run a little further down the corridor and Rex is out of sight, you bring up your wristband and call the commander. It rings for half a minute, but there's no response. He could be in trouble. Something doesn't feel right. There's an anxious feeling you can't quite shake. Maybe I should go find him? He could be in trouble. With that thought, there's not any time to consider and think things through further. You can almost feel the adrenaline start moving through your body as you start taking steps towards the captain's quarters. Your brain almost blanks as you keep running. As you... As you round the corner through the corridors where his room is, you spot Mike and Rex. Mike is standing in front of Rex, blocking his way. Rex has his back towards you and is slowly moving in towards Mike. Mike, you and Charles have basically killed him already, with promises of honor and adventure that you can never keep. There's only pain in this future. Atone for your sins and I'll take him back home. He shouldn't be trapped here, being led to his death by us. Calm down. We'll turn around if he needs to. He's not trapped here. Let's talk to him together. All right? He's blinded by your promises of adventure. It's unfair. We can't drag another world down because of our mistakes. We won't bring him to Arctos. We'll get him to a world nearby and get everything set up. Then he'll be back safe at home. That's the trap. That's where he'll meet his end. Then I'll get on a shuttle myself and bring him home. Lies. Lies and more lies. I'm sick of it. I have never lied to you, Rex. Have you not? You said you'd do everything you could to end the pain on Arctos. Yet here you are, trying to spread it to another world. Rex, I would never do that. You asked me, shortly after I joined your crew, what the worst thing that ever happened to me was. I did. You didn't have an answer at the time. I figured it out now. There's no one event, not even the end of my world. It's the culmination of the past few years. Things getting worse and worse. More death and more pain all around me, and no way to stop it. No matter how much I tried. Eventually, things broke. I know, Rex. I know. There's too much pain. I'll never stop trying to help people and our world. Have you considered what would happen if Alex got stuck up here? Never able to return home? Did you not think Earth would retaliate? I'm looking to keep him safe as much as you are. I'm looking to keep everyone on the Firefly safe. That's why I need you to calm down. At this point, you notice that Rex is holding something. Let's talk this out and make a plan together, alright? Don't you get tired of listening to those thoughts in your head? Those lofty ideals? It's time to just accept that our world has ended, Mike. Let's go down together. The others will take Alex home. You know I can't do that, and you shouldn't. We can still change the world. I had days where I was too tired to get out of bed. I felt too exhausted to end myself. Otherwise, I would have ended myself a long time ago. And yet, you haven't. Don't let today break you either. You sound like the preachers, Mike. How can I believe in heaven, when I've seen both hell and space? I've seen that which lies beyond heaven. The endless stars that even the goddess cannot change, and the pain they've caused. If the goddess exists, why does she allow this kind of evil to continue to exist? Rex, what, what's happened to you? Isn't something that should happen to anyone? We'll make sure it doesn't happen to anyone else. Rex continues, it's as if he can't hear what anyone else is saying. And then there's you. Everyone seems to think that, that you're their daddy, and you're no better. You can't fix everyone's problems. You just end up breaking more people and hurting everyone 
else and your selfish desire to fix things that cannot be fixed. Arctos reached for perfection, but perfection is never meant to be reached. That's why the concept of so-called perfection exists. Instead, we're left with the broken pieces of our attempt. When will you stop trying to piece them back together? No, I will paint these halls in crimson if I have to. Before Mike can respond, Rex rushes towards him and lunges towards his side. Mike lets out a roar of pain and they tumble to the floor in a struggle. Before you can think about it properly, you run your way towards them. However, it seems to be over in seconds, and just as you reach them, Mike throws Rex off him. Rex lands on the floor with a thud. Are you hurt? What can I do? Slow down. Be calm. He says that, but he sounded stressed as ever. There's a red stain on his shirt right at his side, growing larger by the second. I'm just going to put some pressure on here. He puts his hand to his side. Help me flip him over. He moves to flicks rep, flick Rex over to his back. You move over and help him more, and help him slowly move Rex over. Rex's eyes are open. He's crying. Rex? There's a lot of blood on Rex's clothes. It's alright. I got you. Mike maneuvers around and gets Rex, Rex's head in his lap and leans himself against the wall. I've done something horrible, haven't I? His voice is shaking. I didn't mean to... The memories, they... I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Don't hate me. I never wanted to do anything like this. I got you, Rex. It's not looking too bright from here on out, Rex. What? I don't want to be alone. Alex is here. We'll be here with you to the end. Don't worry. Alex, I'm so sorry. I'll explain to him. Don't worry, Rex. Mike looks at you. There are tears flowing down his eyes as well. It's like he's trying to tell you that things are alright without saying it out loud. He'll know it wasn't really you, Rex. I think I understand. I'm sorry, Rex. This probably happened because of me, didn't it? There's no response. Rex seems to have passed out. No, don't think that. Oh my god, I swear to god, I'm tearing up right now. I am tearing up right now. No, don't think that. Some people carry a lot of weight, and with that, something like the Spectre can have a devastating effect. In Rex's case, more than most, I don't know exactly what caused this, but I'll find out. No matter what, there is a pause. This is my fault. He closes Rex's eyes with his free hand. I've put both him and you in danger. Let's discuss this when we've gotten him somewhere better to rest. He was right in a lot of things. If you need to go home, I'll get you home right away. Just... Just say the word. Okay, I'll think about it. Thank you. You stand there in silence for a minute as Mike looks at Rex. Eventually, he slowly puts Rex down and uses the wall to, for support to stand up. You walk up to him and put his free arm over your shoulder and support him. We need to get up to the navigation deck, or engineering, and get Charles out. Rex managed to somehow close the door to the med bay before getting here. Thanks, Alex. And, sorry. I'll be honest and say that I never expected something like this. I'm scared. But, I don't think he was right. If you have something to fight for, it's not a bad thing to ask for help. And I don't feel like I want to return home. Honestly, I don't have all that much at home. And the chance to change the world, your world, it's... You're a good man. We'll definitely manage to change the world. You sure that's not just your blood boss talking? Might be. This reminds me of that last night in Broadtown. The cabin? You got drunk on Firewine and Mike helped you hold steady and get you indoors. This time, I'm the unsteady one. No Firewine, however. You make your way to the elevator and in less than a minute, you make it to the navigation deck. Mike makes his way to one of the panels, and a few seconds later, you can hear Charles' voice. Before long, Charles is there, and after he applies a quick bandage to Mike's side, you help him move Mike to the med bay. Gerald is already there when you arrive, and after making sure everyone's going to be alright, he escorts you back to your room. A few days later... The next few days are... colorless. It's as if everyone's mood is down, and Max is less active than usual. Bruce and even Gerald to try to make some conversation with you, but it feels stale regardless of what anyone does. You have the same experience trying to talk to others. Perhaps it's just one of those things that will pass eventually. Nothing lasts forever, after all. You spend most of the time in your room, 
focusing on setting up the server and router that you'll be managing soon enough. And then, in the evening, a couple days later, you get a phone call. It's an unfamiliar sound, even though it hasn't been that long since you left Earth. Let's answer it. You pick the phone up. Alex speaking. Hi! It's been a while! Just checking in. How are you doing? I'm alright. Hmm. You sound a little down. Feeling homesick yet? I miss everyone, but I don't really feel homesick. I can't tell her that, can I? But maybe I should? What's there to lose? I miss everyone, but I don't really feel homesick. It's weird. Something difficult happened and I don't quite know how to react. I'm sorry. Maybe that reaction is fine? How could it be? I think it's alright to just take it slow and take your time in processing things. Thanks, Julia. I don't really feel like talking right now, if that's alright. Call me if you need to talk, alright? I will. Good night, Alex. Good night, Julia. You hang up the phone and keep working on the router configuration. Just wait and let it process. Easier said than done. That reminds you. She gave you a gift before you left Earth. Maybe now's a good time to open it. You unpack the wrapped package slowly, taking your time. It's a photograph. You can't quite explain it, but it definitely makes you feel more at home. Like things are more alright. After a little while, there's a soft knock on your door. You open the door, and there's Mike. Can I come in? Be my guest? Literally. You can't, you can't help but almost laugh. That's an entrance. Are you feeling better? All patched up. Charles works fast. How are you so calm about everything? Honestly, I'm not. My insides are screaming and my heart is crying. But if I let it get to me, I'll end up in despair. I don't think that would help anyone. He sits down on your bed. How are you doing? I'm alright. Really? After all that? Everyone reacts differently after something traumatic. If you want to talk, I'll listen. But if you're really fine, then that's alright as well. At the question, it's like the floodgates break. The tension is released and you can feel that feeling you are carrying in your stomach drop. It's like a lot of tension just released and a nervous feeling all at once. No, not really. It's like I don't really still process what happened. One second, Rex was really interesting and I was getting to know him. The next, he's off the rails trying to kill you to get me home, even though I never asked him to. That wasn't really Rex. I think I get that, but it's surreal. Desperation makes people do strange things. And then there was a specter. I've asked John to set up a system to scan for them. He should have it up in a day or two at most. It's not like I actually knew Rex. He's quiet and listens to you talk. But he made an effort to get to know me. That's more than most people back home would do. And he shared his own struggles, so it was easy to relate. I don't really know how to process it. It's like I just want to run away from the feeling. That's not a bad idea. You can always run from your problems, you know. You give him a look that questions everything he just said. That doesn't make you a bad person. Or weak. Most things you can face all alone or with friends and get through it. But some things aren't that easy. Some things are too heavy to bear. No matter what you do, and they won't go away. I think it's okay to run from that feeling. Hide and recover. You shouldn't judge yourself. When I first swapped from teaching, a new world opened up. With that, I used to work so much that whenever I took time off, I'd feel restless. I forgot how to relax and run away. Would you like to run away with me? Just for a moment? You're going to have to expand on that. Not like you can run away. On a spaceship. Why not? Let's run away for a bit. Fuck it, why not try? So how do we run away? Hmm, let's see. Back on Arctos when I was younger, I'd run away from my studies and everything and sneak away to a nearby lake at night with a friend. We'd skinny dip. It was something to break the flow. Something you shouldn't do, but that was still refreshing. Wanna go skinny dipping with me? Does he realize what that implies? Doesn't look like it. But then again, why not? How would we even... Let's head down to the extra cargo hold. Is this a wait-and-see kind of thing, or should I ask what the plan is? I think you'll get it as soon as you see it. 
You close down your computer and follow Mike out of the room. He leads you down a corridor, and eventually you reach a door that he unlocks with his wristband. I'm going to, like, hide this because I'm scared. The room you arrive in seems like a large empty cargo space, except it's set up to look somewhat like a shooting range. Give me a few minutes and I'll get everything ready. You wait and watch as he slowly starts putting away things from the shooting range, slowly creating a large empty space. He pushes a few buttons and changes the lighting in the room. Alright, and then the final touch. He goes back to the entrance and works for a minute with the display behind you. All done. You see that line? He points to a mark on the floor. Pass that and you'll be floating. It'll feel like water. That's actually pretty cool. That's new. Still up for a dip? Yeah. With that, he starts undressing. You turn your head away, suddenly feeling shy. Before you know it, he's already moved past the mark on the floor and seems to be swimming in the air. There goes nothing. You undress and step over the line. So, is this anything like skinny dipping? It really does feel like water. There's even some resistance. This is my little oasis. He looks to be in thought for a little bit. I've never used it like this, though. I don't think anyone ever has. Okay, I think it's safe to show it. Ah. Ah. There we go. Yeah, I think that's safe. I don't think anyone ever has. I usually come here to do target practice. That explains the targets. I'd like to try that sometime. It's not as good as a real shooting range, but... I could show you how to use it sometime if you'd like. As he says that, he swims up behind you and grabs your leg, pulling you downwards. You're not ready and get pulled downwards. For a second, it feels like you're falling downwards and you let out a yell. And then, you're floating again. Oh? Huh. You proceed to try and catch him to do the same. Turns out, he's slippery, and what ensues is this game of back and forth. Him tossing you in some direction and you trying to get back at him. Eventually, you finally manage to catch him, but before you can push him away in any direction, he grabs onto you and pulls you into a hug. Are you feeling distracted yet? It probably makes me less distracted, although his closeness is pretty distracting. Then would it be alright if I kissed you? Do you really want that? I'd like to, if you're feeling the same way. Like that. You pull back a little and face him, and then he puts his face forward and kisses you. It's a slow kiss, and he pulls you closer as you kiss. He takes his time, as if he's exploring what you respond to. It's authoritative, yet gentle. It feels like it lasts for a long time, not that you mind. As he breaks the kiss, your role definitely feels lighter. He breaks the hold and swims a lap around the room. You do the same, and after that conversation returns to casual subjects. You tell him about how you're setting up the router and switching systems that they'll be using once you get to Arctos. You also discuss what what to do in the coming days. It seems like there's an idea that you'll be spending time with the different crew members. Event eventually, you both get out and get dressed again. He even winks at you. You walk for a while. Things, seemed, things seem a little more normal for a while. You eventually find yourself back at your room. Seems like you really did manage to break the flow of difficult thoughts. Hope. Hopefully the future holds less chaos, and maybe even some romance. There's still one thing, however, gnawing on your mind, but perhaps now you'll be able to focus and process what happened with Rex. After a night of rest, you find yourself feeling different as you make your way to the canteen for breakfast. Hello? This is for this... This is for this route in the 0.6 version of the game. As you might have noticed, this update focuses on John's route. There are a bunch of fixes for the entire story, hundreds really, and Mike's route for Chapter 3. Originally, this update was going to include Mike and John's Chapter 4 as well. But I was decided to postpone it in order to finish up some things. I wasn't quite satisfied with it. My apologies, but you'll have to wait for that, as well as Charles's route in Chapter 3 and 4. Other than that, there's a ton of updates done behind the scenes. Coding fixes, new songs, new art. Really, there's 19 CGs in total now. You can't access them all yet, but soon. I just need to catch up on writing after a hectic period. So, thanks for playing my game, and an extra shout out to all the amazing artists for helping me tell my story. Check out the credits if you're curious about them, and if you have the time, I would appreciate a rating on itch.io. It's very motivating to keep producing content if the numbers go up. Until next time, all the best. That's it for Mike's route?
fuck. Well, let's just read the memories a bit. Let me hide this. I'm scared. Mike's memory. One is too many. A few years back in Core Arctos. Mike grunts as he finishes the set, racking the barbell back where it belongs. Okay, yeah, I think I can, uh, yeah, I think I can show this. Aww. He lets out a deep sigh as he sits up. Looking over to his left, his friend is already removing the weights from the bar, slowly replacing them with his own preferred weight. Mike gets off the bench and takes a swig from his water bottle, as a large polar bear takes his place on the bench and begins his set. A day as any other, is it? Yet everything feels so gray, as if time has slowed down and whenever it moves forward it scrapes and pains. Another sigh escapes his lips as his mind drifts, slowly running through the events of the day. This world is far too harsh to continue as it does, and life is far too precious to be thrown away as it is today. A third sigh in just a few minutes. That's more sighing than usual. Are you okay? Mike shakes his head a little as to focus on reality once more. A fourth sigh escapes Mike's lips. I got another call today, another dead friend. One is too many. Silence falls for a moment. How do I handle that much? That's not something you can fix, Mike. And it's not something you can take any blame for. I... A fifth sigh. I want to do something about it. From what I can see, you're already trying. Far more than most. I wonder if it's, it's the right thing, joining the army. I can't tell you that. But if you want to change things, it's a good place as any to try. The polar bear finishes the set and the two switch places. A few weeks later. Um. Okay. That's a lot of sighing. Seems like it's getting worse and worse. You're still going through with it? I've already started, it's just... I've lost a lot of friends these last few weeks. I want to do something. It's like my heart is yelling at me to fix it. But I can't. Mike closes his eyes and sits down on a nearby bench. You shouldn't overwork yourself. Let's clean up and grab dinner somewhere. You need a break. Okay, we're just going to, uh, here's, okay, okay, we're just going to leave off here tonight, since we literally just finished what's existent of Mike's route. <sighs> Not as long, I'm sorry, and I don't want to start another route, so I can't think of anything to say, so stay safe, have a good night. And I'll see y'all tomorrow.